banking on earth. Thomas Jefferson, the banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties. Banking, the greatest scam on earth. Thomas Jefferson said, I believe the banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, the banks will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. Jefferson's warning is already here. Forty million Americans are living on food stamps. Millions more are now homeless, living in tents, all because of one institution, the Federal Reserve System. The Federal Reserve is a group of private bankers who have stolen the money creation process from the American people. Most people still believe the Fed is an agency of the government working in our best interests. It is not. There is no greater form of evil in the world today, so let's explore the banking scam. None of us have ever been taught anything about money. The reason is to prevent us from learning the truth that money is a trick and money is a trap. When solving any crime, there's a universal truth. Follow the money, but with the banking scam, follow it backwards. Where does money come from? The world's money supply is always growing. Where does all the new money keep coming from? Money comes from privately controlled global banks like the Federal Reserve System. They create money every day, which increases the world's money supply. Because all banks are either owned or controlled by private bankers, the real question is, how do private bankers create new money? And the answer is, they create it out of thin air. Bankers create money out of nothing. They make it up. It is a fiction. Wow. Godlike power to create something of value out of nothing. A stroke of a keyboard and money is, in, is created. In fact, only 3% of the world's money is even in the form of bills and coins, which means 97% of all money in the world is just numbers typed on a computer screen. This is part one of the banking scam. Money is created out of nothing. The second part of the scam is this phony money is issued as debt. What is debt exactly? Well, when you consider we work our whole lives to pay it off, you could say debt is slavery. But whose debt is this phony money? It's our debt, all of it. It's our debt when we use credit cards, we get student loans, borrow money for mortgages, all bank borrowing. And it's our debt, again, when the government borrows, which is each and every day. In today's world, money is debt, and debt is money, and don't forget the interest charges. Money equals debt, and debt equals slavery. Therefore, money equals slavery. Our monetary system is a carefully concealed system of slavery. Why? Because our government can create the same money for free with no interest charges, just like they used to as the Founding Fathers designed it inside the United States Constitution for our protection against private bankers. The third part of the banking scam is very evil. When bankers create money from nothing and issue it as debt, they only create the principal portion of the debt. They do not create the money for the future interest payments. There is not enough money in existence for all of us to make our interest payments. In fact, our money creation system is even mathematically impossible. Money issued by the banks, principal debt, does not equal the money demanded back to the banks, principal plus interest. We are forced to play a game of musical chairs to see who can make their debt repayments. This guarantees a world of bankruptcy, competition, and scarcity of money. For example, we go to the bank to borrow money for a house, let's say $100,000. The moment we sign the loan document, the bank creates the money out of thin air. A $100,000 debit gets registered for us and a $100,000 secured credit for them. Then one of two things happens. Either we give the bank 30 years of labor making house payments totaling 300000 for the original 100000 we borrowed, or the bank takes our house. The bankers get either our labor for life or our house, and often they get both, all from money created out of thin air and issued as debt, for money made out of nothing. This is why all the bankers end up with all the assets. 
The fourth part of the banking scam is inflation. People think inflation is prices and costs increase. A better answer might be the value of our money always goes down. Inflation is created every time the central banks print money, which is every day. Where does all this new money get its value? The answer is, it steals its value from the existing money supply, where our savings are. Our savings are disappearing because of the new money they're printing. If money creation was in balance with goods and services, there would be no inflation. Prices would stay the same. But the reality is banks always print money, driving prices ever higher, which steals the value of our savings, making them disappear. Since the private bankers created the private Federal Reserve in 1913, the United States dollar has lost 97 cents in purchasing power. An item in 1913 that cost $100 in 2011 cost $2,230, a price increase of 2,130%. This is the banking scam. Four parts. Private bankers create money out of nothing and charge interest on it. There is no money created for the future interest payments and inflation steals our savings every day. In order for the banking scam to be pulled over our eyes, the bankers need help from the likes of paid-for politicians and appointed civil servants, military-industrial complex, mainstream media, multinational corporations, and the bankers' good buddies. For example, what do our banker-controlled television networks say about criminal bankers? Oh, bankers are our saviors. Chairman is man of the year. He saved the world. Bankers really do deserve their bonuses. They're so smart. And what do our banker-owned G20 politicians say we need to do? Uh, that we must save our banking system. And now we need austerity measures like increasing existing taxes and bringing in new taxes, cutting our social programs, including education and health care, stealing from our pension plans while increasing the retirement age, keeping us working for more years at lower wages while placing our children and grandchildren in debt and servitude for their future lives. We are being lied to that we must go deeper in debt for bailouts, stimulus packages, quantitative easing, saving the too big to fail banks, credit easing, currency interventions, all names that mean the same thing, more debt to us. Is it not strange that the solution to too much debt is always more debt to us? And where is all this money going? It's going to the banks and to the bankers. They are stealing our money right now. One-tenth of one percent of the world's population owns two-thirds of the world's wealth. This means that 99.99% of the world's population own less than a third of the wealth, a decreasing amount because these guys are stealing it. We desperately need to wake up to the banking scam. It is time for change. To retake control of our money system, we must stop supporting the banking scam. Lincoln said the government should create all the currency and credit needed to satisfy the spending power of government and the buying power of consumers. Money will cease to be master and will then become servant of humanity. And Jefferson said the issuing power of money should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. It's a pyramid scheme. And we, the people, are the bottom layers of the banking pyramid. Without our support, the banking scam collapses. We have to do it ourselves. Wake up, get active, wake others. Remove our money from the bank. Buy gold and silver coins. Get out of debt. Rip up your credit cards. These actions will bring down the banking scam. Only vote for politicians who support debt-free money or run for office yourself and turn off mainstream media to search for the truth while you still can and support every effort to end the Federal Reserve System and all the privately owned central banks. Let's bring these criminals to justice to get our money and our countries back before it's too late.